Hello, fellow Southern Cameroonians. My name is Ntumfo Imbo Herbert, and I bring you revolutionary greetings from Washington in the United States of America. I'm coming to you on the second day of deliberations between our teachers and a delegation from the colonial government of La Republique de Cameroon. I'm coming to you also on the eve of deliberations beginning on Monday between our lawyers and that delegation from that government. And I speak to you fully aware that our teachers at this point are held at gunpoint and are being told to sign an agreement that lifts the strike and allows schools to resume, to reopen for the second term on Monday. And I say to my people, you cannot do this. I bring greetings of gratitude to our lawyers and our teachers because you've been steadfast, because you've been men of honesty and integrity. You cannot sign a deal with the devil. This is a government that does not honor its word. This is a government that does not respect any agreement, any accord. This is a government that has never honored a single United Nations resolution pertaining to Southern Cameroons, and they will not start honoring today. You will have nothing to safeguard any agreement that you sign with the government of La Republique de Cameroon, and so I urge you not to sign any agreement. This is a government that does not respect court rulings. It does not respect the rulings that were handed down on Bakasi, the rulings that were handed down by the African Union Accredited Court based in the Gambia. This is a government that has not signed the ICC and therefore holds its people in total immunity and impunity. This is a government that does not respect the constitution of its own La Republique de Cameroon. The Constitution provides since 1996 for 20 years that there should be decentralized regional assemblies that are elected with their elected presidents. That has not been done. This is a government that lives above the law, does not respect the law, does not respect human rights. And I speak to you just having watched video of of the children being tortured in Yaoundé, moved into dungeons, and perhaps in people's garages. I don't know where this is, but I don't know what kind of government runs those kinds of private prisons and execution camps, except a government that is criminal and does not deserve to be respected or to be handed over the governance of any people at all. I say to my people, we cannot sign this agreement, our lawyers and our teachers, because even if it improves the lives of and improves the sector, the professional sector of teaching, education, and legal system, it does nothing to the disease. It treats the symptoms. It does not touch the disease. Because if we sign, how do we explain? How do we explain to that old woman in Mamfe who must go to a regional hospital run essentially by francophones and must go through the process of explaining her disease to someone who speaks only French and hope for a cure and hope for treatment that is effective and efficient for them? How do we explain to the Okada rider, to the taxi driver, to the transporter, who every day is robbed at gunpoint by police and gendarmes at checkpoints on roads that are never maintained, never tarred, never will be tarred, and that are meant to absolutely degrade our people and run our economy to the ground? How are we going to explain to that child in Mancon who has to go to a vocational school and discovers that they have to go to school in French, they have to pass the French exam, the BEPC, the probatoire, and the back, the same system that the French themselves have rejected and that Mr. Bia, francophone, has considered is not good enough for his own family. He has moved his own children to go through the Anglo-Saxon system in the United States of America. How do we explain if we sign such an agreement to someone who must go through a criminal investigation or a case that is being brought before the court and who must go to a judicial police, speak to the gendarmes or the police in English, and these people will translate uh, the stuff into French. They are not even qualified translators. They will bring the stuff in French into a common, into a court in the common law jurisdiction. And our people are going to be expected to get justice from law, from judges who are francophones and who are asking you to make your case in French. This is not doable. This is not acceptable. And how do we explain? How do we explain to everyone who to whom it's so clear that? La Republique du Cameroon considers us a different people and a foreign people. Their official government policy says it is national integration. Now, they're not integrating francophones. The reason they have a national integration uh, policy is because they want to integrate these foreigners and strangers called Southern Cameroonians. You can see it in the way they implement even the, 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 the custom system. When you leave Bamenda, you have to stop at Upstation and at Matazim to go through customs because you're coming from a foreign country. When you you leave Tico, you still have to stop at those custom checkpoints. You're coming from a foreign country. 
And so we cannot say that there is a solution that we can transfer that can be resolved tomorrow before the assembly of La Republique de Cameroon, the parliament of La Republique de Cameroon. Because if we say that we are going to the parliament of La Republique de Cameroon, we are accepting that we are citizens of La Republique de Cameroon. And we are not citizens of La Republique de Cameroon. Our country got independence on the 21st of April 1961, before the General Assembly of the United Nations, we had voted on the 11th of February 1961, and on the 1st of October, we had independence. Even if on the eve of that independence, La République du Cameroon marched into our territory, and when the British lowered the Union Jack at Tico Airport, they raised the flag of La République du Cameroon, and they occupied our land from that day. And ever since then, they have held you in bondage. The only reason they put you together for a negotiation during these few days is because they realize that you have escaped from the cage. And they are looking for a way to lure you back into the cage and to buy themselves a lock so strong you will never, ever be able to break free. They are looking for the chains of slavery to put back onto your ankles. And they are going to make sure that they hold you down in bondage forever. This is a government that since 1961 has spent its entire lifetime doing constitutional and legal manipulation of every single law to make sure that the whole are people down in bondage. This is not a government to which we can surrender our lives or surrender our freedom. This is a government that we must resist. This is a government that we must fight against, that we must break so as to establish our own country in its governance, in its dignity, and we must return our people to that dignity. And we must remember that we are building on the sacrifice of more than five decades of liberation movements, of people, our heroes and martyrs, people who have died in prison, people who have lived their entire lives in exile, people who are still languishing in prison, people who have been disappeared, people whose blood has watered that tree of freedom to which we look, people who are now at this moment who have been raped and maimed and been tortured in all kinds of ways and their dignity has been denied. We cannot let the blood go in our hands and we don't deliver the freedom for which our people have fought so hard and for which we are so united and at this moment so well mobilized. We must march on and we must cross that line of freedom and restoration of the independence of the people of Southern Cameroon on Sunday, the 1st of October, 2017. Aluta continua. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. The people of West Cameroon have a duty to resist your oppression. 